I built another little toy walking robot. I'll demonstrate it now. This is a uh, clawfoot walker. Its basic design is this. These claws for feet do this. That's what makes it walk. They have a wide enough stance, or this part is wide enough, but the whole body, the whole robot, like it is right now, will rest on just one leg and foot. I've done a couple of things. I remember a video by Robot where he showed this type of thing on another toy, I believe. Instead of uh, having these overlap like this, you hide this little finger in the middle underneath your foot. So you can't see it. Gives it a little bit of deception. The other thing about this that makes it a little deceptive, kind of tried to hide the fact that it's a clawfoot walker is there's a little link here that just pivots on this screw but uh, gives it makes you think it's more complicated than it is this is just going along for a ride it's not doing anything except pivoting right here there's another screw up here that it's uh, sliding on pen and slot type thing we'll take the body off and first we'll look at the body a little it's a diesel punk type design, or that's what I was going for anyway. Uh, has louvers here and some fins. I, I kind of think of it as a, where I was starting with. It was like a old diesel uh, locomotive streamline type thing. That's the aesthetic I was going for. If I achieved it or not, I don't know. I'll take the body off and show what's underneath. Body's held on by two screws, three millimeter by twelve millimeter screws. Drop it that every time. I'm trying to keep this in frame. I'll show a little more about the body later. We'll show it walking without the uh, body now. The whole clawfoot thing was based on uh, some designs. But the robot hut showed, he told, showed three different types of clawfoot walkers. This is uh, number two. The, the first one was the simplest one. I tried building one of those. I really didn't like the walking motion of it. I like this much better. The one he showed, these gears were in line like this, and the, the foot came out the bottom like this. I just decided to uh, turn it 90 degrees. So I'd have a body like this on it, just a little, just something a little different. These links here, they don't do anything. They're just made to give you, give you the appearance that it's more complicated than it is, but uh, some type of strange leg action going on. I'll take them off. These are just pivots. These screws are much longer than they have to be. I just didn't bother to cut them off. These are just pivots. The 
my feet are held on by screws. They could be glued on. I started screwing them on because I was different. I was experimenting with different types of feet, and I just wanted to, if I glued them on, I'd have to reprint the leg every time. Let's let it walk now without those, so you can see that they don't do anything. And I'll show underneath it. You can see what's going on there. Kind of interesting. Let's turn it off. What was the other thing I wanted to show? Oh, this screw and this are all in line. When it was perfectly centered up, this motor shaft and this and this little thing here, well, this is just a guide. We're all in line. So this could have been straight down. I just did all the this to uh, obscure the fact that it's a coffin walker. If you're going to build one, you need a double A battery holder or triple A by two battery holder. This little switch, I'll put links in the description, the Thingiverse and Printables description for the ones I use. This is a very tiny switch. I've just got it. It sits in a pocket there and a little hot glue holds it in. The motor is an N20 dual output shaft gear motor. 3 volt, 30 RPM. They're about 9 bucks a piece. They're not nearly as cheap as the ones that have just a straight shaft coming out the bottom. It's a nice little motor though. They also have a different actual electrical motor on them. The ones on the other ones are longer. a nice little motor. I'll uh, disassemble it a little further. The, uh, to assemble it, really the only tricky part of assembly is you these uh, holes in these gears, as you can see, are 180 degrees out of phase from this side to this side. The ones on this side are in the same place. Uh, I've got some other parts printed here. This is printed in like this with a little square on the axle so you can turn them like this when you assemble them. Don't assemble them like this. You can glue them together, although those are just pushed together right now, but you could glue them together with super glue or some Weld 16, I believe it is. For plastic, but you want to glue them together like this. There's a little trough right here, but this wire, just a drop of super glue. Once you have to wait until uh, after you get this screwed onto this before you put the uh, wires on the motor, or you won't be able to get unless you want to put the wires on the motor and then. I'll put them on here after you put this together. But the hard part is, let's take apart this side to show. When you put these screws, these parts here, the legs, like uh, they have to be drilled out to three, three millimeters or an eighth inch drill will work also. So it the screw and this, this rotates on this easily, but it threads into the, the hole in the gear. You can see the half of it gone now. The only real hard part is you'll want to put this gear in last. Uh, well, you'll want to put it in after you assemble this side. But before you put this side on, because then you won't be able to get it in. And the reason for that is once you get this side assembled and you get these synced up where they belong, you'll be able to just 
push the gear on there and these will be in the right place. If you try to assemble it any other way, it, you can do it, but it gets a little harder. Like I originally assembled it just by uh, putting these in their place and then pushing the motor down. But these gears meshing will always want to turn one of these other gears, so it's kind of difficult. The easiest way to build it up to this point and push this gear on. Let it roll just like that so you can see what's going on. Another thing you want to look out for, these N20 motors have a very small shaft on them, 3 millimeters, and they got a flat. So when you're 3D printing stuff, it can be very hard to keep the tolerances right to where this is a good fit. If you don't get a good fit on here and it's really loose, it'll walk, but when it's on its downward motion, it'll go, it'll this will slip and it'll make a chunking sound it might even interfere with itself but if you get it makes a loud chunking sound when it's walking it's probably this gear just slipping at times the other part to disassemble it i don't think i'll do it is just these two screws here down through here hold this and this with two parts of the frame together You'll want to drill out the ones in the top so that the screws will go easily through them but thread into the bottom part. I'm trying to decide if there's anything else I need to talk about. It's pretty easy build as far as most of the things I've built. You just slide that up in there and put the screws back in it. And it should start working again. There is one other, oh you can see the basis of the whole design is it stands on one leg so that's how it walks it just swaps legs that it's standing on and moves forward one other part when you when you print this this is a sacrificial bridge in here all this will be solid but this part right here you don't have to cut it out very accurately it's just clearance for these legs going up in there in the motor. But this will all be solid. And I've got a picture on the on the uh, printables and the Thingiverse showing where this is will be cut. You'll see a step down there. This is only two layers thick or 0.4 millimeters. So you just get in there with your X-Acto knife and uh, cut it out. It's not too bad. And like I say, it doesn't have to be done really accurately. It uh, just needs to be cleared out. You'll need to drill these two screw, screw holes out. The reason you do that is because you don't want to have to print this thing with support. All of this would be support area. But if you if you do that, you just bridge it, your printer will probably bridge across this in a straight line without too much of a mess. It won't be beautiful, but it, it works. And to decide if there's anything else I want to tell you. Here's the battery holders I used. Here's the switch I used. I'll put links in the uh, Thingiverse and printables showing where to get those. I believe that's it. I'll, I'm trying to keep this video short. So thanks for watching.